Hello guys, it's Masha, welcome back. It's citrus season, which is so welcome in the midst of winter. The citrus really helps brighten up these cold and dark days that we've been having. And to celebrate the season today, I'll be making a lemon dill, white bean and potato soup, as well as a really simple fennel and orange salad. So I'm gonna start with the soup. And the soup has the very delicious classic flavor combo of lemon and dill going for it. It's got white beans and potatoes, which make it creamy. The ingredients are all really pretty simple and straightforward, but they all come together to make something that's much greater than the sum of its parts. So first I'm peeling an onion and I'm gonna dice it. So I usually cut it to the root like this, then in half lengthwise, then like this. And then make sure not to go through the root ends so that the onion stays together, which makes it easier to dice. And then that helps get a really nice, even dice. I'm going to transfer the onion to a bowl for now to free up space on the cutting board. Next is two stalks of celery and I'm going to dice them finely. So I'm going to cut it into sort of strips first. and then bunch them together and dice. I'm gonna transfer the celery to the same bowl as the onion because they're gonna be going in at the same time. Next is carrot and same thing. We want a kind of fine dice on it. So I'm gonna, similarly to the celery, cut it into sort of strips first and then lengthwise and then dice and this combination of onion celery and carrot is a kind of classic mirepoix or sofrito which makes for a really really great base for soups and stews and a lot of other dishes next i'm gonna mince up some garlic so i'm gonna smash the cloves first which makes the skin come off much easier. Usually comes off in like one motion, which is great. And it's the middle of January, which means that the garlic that I get at the farmer's market was harvested a pretty long time ago. And it usually has a sprout inside of it. And what I like to do is I like to cut it in half and take out that sprout. And that's just anecdotally supposed to make the garlic more digestible. If you're someone that has uh, digestion problems after eating garlic, try this trick out. I don't always do this to all garlic, but if the garlic has like a very noticeable big sprout inside of it, like my garlic does, then I definitely do it. And I'm just mincing up this garlic finely. I'm gonna set it aside for now. Next, I'm going to prep the potatoes. I'm going to peel them and I'm using yellow or Yukon gold potatoes. You don't have to peel them for the soup, but I feel like peeling them today. If you leave the potato skins on, they're just going to add a little more texture, which can be nice. These skins just look a little, little too rough. And I'm going to cut these potatoes into about half inch chunks. Okay, so I set the potatoes aside and now I have this beautiful bunch of dill that I already washed and dried and I'm just going to slice it. And it's okay to include some tender stems. I love putting a lot of dill in the soup just because it's one of my favorite herbs. And together with the potatoes and the white beans and the lemons, it's just so, so good. Next is coriander and the flavor of coriander I find also goes super well with all of these ingredients. So I have whole coriander, you could also use ground, but for best flavor I always suggest using whole spices and then grinding them freshly. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I added it to my mortar and pestle and just gonna give it a nice grind. And immediately this beautiful fragrance gets released. And if you do get ground spices, that's totally 
fine, but just make sure to use them up and replace them often because spices can go rancid and lose their potency and flavor super, super quickly. I'm also going to add some chili flakes to taste right in here just because the coriander and chili flakes are going to go in at the same time. So I'm just combining them. I'm not going to grind the chili flakes. So this is all set, so I'm going to set it aside. I also have some cooked white beans here, some baby spinach for wilting into the soup at the end, some vegetable broth. I made this myself yesterday. You can also use store-bought vegetable broth, miso, which we're going to use a little later, and our lemons, which we're also going to use later. And we're ready to start cooking the soup. Okay, so I'm preheating my soup pot over medium heat. I'm going to add some olive oil, a generous amount to basically coat the bottom of the pot. And once the oil is warm, I'm going to add the mirepoix. And that's the sound that you want to hear when you're adding your veggies, which means that the oil is sufficiently hot. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And I'm going to saute the veggies for about seven to ten minutes. I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to let them go pretty low and slow. We don't want them to brown. We just want them to soften and start releasing their sugars. And they're going to make a really, really great flavor base for the soup. Okay, so the vegetables are looking great. And this took more like 15 minutes than 10 minutes. And it just depends on the vegetables and how finely you dice them. Uh, it's always better to rely on visual and scent cues instead of just time. So the cues that we're looking for here is for the onion to be nice and translucent and for all of the veggies to feel and look soft. We don't want them to be browned, just very gently and lightly cooked. Next, I'm going to add some garlic. The coriander and chili flakes. Some black pepper. And I'm going to give that just another minute or so until the garlic is fragrant and until you can smell the coriander. Next, I'm going to add our potatoes. Another generous pinch of salt to season them. I'm going to mix the potatoes to coat them and everything. Now I'm going to add the white beans and the veggie broth. I'm going to mix all of this together and bring the heat up to a high so that this comes to a simmer. And with the veggie broth, if you bought store-bought, just check how much salt it has in it and season the soup accordingly. So I made this vegetable broth and I salted it kind of lightly. So I know that I'm going to add a little bit more salt. We are going to be adding miso later on, which is also salty. So that's something to consider. I'm going to cover the pot just so this comes to simmer faster. Okay, so the soup is simmering and we're going to let it simmer like this for about 20 minutes or until the potatoes are nice and soft and cooked through. So I'm actually going to transfer this to the stovetop. And while that's cooking, I'm going to show you how to make the really simple fennel and orange salad. Okay, so this is one of my favorite winter salads. It's super easy to make. It's colorful and vibrant and bright. So I'm going to start out by slicing about a quarter of a red onion. I already had this quarter in the fridge really thinly. And for that, I really like using a mandolin slicer which is a slicer that has this really sharp blade and it can slice things super, super thinly. But you could cut it with a knife, just make sure you do it super thinly. So mandolins are awesome, but also super, super dangerous just because that blade is so, so sharp. So make sure to either use a guard that the mandolins come from that prevents you from cutting your fingers, or I like using a towel because it just makes it a little more flexible. So I place a towel like this over whatever I'm cutting to protect my fingers. I'm going to transfer this onion into a small bowl and I'm going to add a little splash of apple cider vinegar over the onions 
and just kind of mix them in there. And this is just gonna help mellow out the onions a little bit so that they're not as sharp and pungent. Next, we're gonna do the fennel. I love fennel, it's so crunchy and refreshing tasting. I'm gonna slice off the fronds or the stems and we're gonna keep some of these tender greens or fronds for garnishing the salad. And then for the stems, you can use them to make veggie broth. You can use them in juice. They make really delicious juice. So now we have our fennel bulb. I'm gonna cut it in half, just so that it fits on my mandolin. And I'm gonna also slice it on the mandolin. And I'm putting it uh, the cut side down. And I really strongly prefer to mandolin fennel as opposed to slicing it, just because it can be really crunchy and a little bit tough. But when you mandolin it, those slices almost melt in your mouth. It's really good. Okay, so I'm done slicing the fennel and it's looking good. And I'm just gonna arrange it on a serving platter. Next, I'm gonna show you how to really nicely cut oranges for a salad and I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. So the first way, we're gonna cut off the ends of an orange, and this is a blood orange, which is just so beautiful and such a treat during this time of year. So that now we have this flat base, right? We can set it flat. So set it flat like that, and then kind of contour the orange with your knife and slice off the skin. And if you don't get it all on the first try, you can go over it later to get the membrane. But basically we're just looking to get the skin and the pith off of the orange. Just going over again and getting any of the white parts, the pith off. And now all we're gonna do is just slice it so that we get these pretty little, pretty little slices that kind of look like the sun. And I'm gonna arrange these slices on our serving platter with the fennel. And then the other way to cut an orange for a salad is to segment it. So we're gonna start the same way that we started before. Just cut off the ends. And we're gonna do the same thing, just contour the orange and cut off the skin. And this is a cara cara orange, which is this beautiful pinkish color inside. And we're gonna segment the orange over our serving platter just to make sure that any juices that escape go into the salad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut in between the membranes. So each slice has a membrane in between the membranes like that, which is gonna give us this beautiful um, membrane free slice and just keep going like that this is one of those really meditative and satisfying activities in the kitchen I think it's really fun and what we're gonna do with all of this remaining pith is we're gonna squeeze it all over the salad to get all of the juice out and there we go, super beautiful. Next, I'm gonna take those onions that we prepped earlier and arrange those on top. You could rinse the onions to get rid of the vinegar, but I like that little bit of sharpness. Next, I have olives. I'm using Castelvetrano olives. You can use any olives that you like. So mine are already pitted and I'm just gonna tear them and arrange them over top. I like tearing just for textural interest. You can also smash them with a knife, which would give a similar effect. I'm gonna generously drizzle the salad with olive oil. Flaky salt. I'm using Maldon salt. Some black pepper. And that's it. You can also drizzle the salad with a little extra vinegar, any nice vinegar you like, like red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, if there's not enough acid coming from the onions. And this is our super simple, super beautiful winter fennel and orange salad.
and the timer for the soup just went off so perfect timing all right so here's our soup the potatoes are nice and tender and silky and what i'm gonna do next is blend half of the soup i'm gonna add about half of the soup to an upright blender and we're gonna blend that until smooth and return it to the pot and that's just gonna give the soup a nice creamy texture but it's also gonna stay a little bit chunky because we're not blending all of it this is a really really great trick for giving a little more body and creaminess to soups i do it all the time okay so i think that's good i'm also gonna add some white miso and miso is just going to give us a little bit more savoriness and saltiness and umami. And I'm going to blend until smooth. Now I'm going to return the blended soup to the pot. I'm going to mix it all in. Now we have this beautiful creamy and chunky texture. Next, we're gonna zest two lemons into the soup. And the reason that we're adding the lemon zest and later the lemon juice in now is because we want maximum brightness and acidity from the lemon zest and juice and cooking them would um, make them get rid of that acidity. So we need them to be fresh. And I'm using a microplane grater for zesting. You can also use a special zester or any grater with a small hole side will work as well. And one more lemon. And we also need a quarter cup of lemon juice, which is usually two small lemons or one really large lemon. So let's see. That lemon was a quarter cup. So I'm gonna add that into the soup. Also gonna wilt in that spinach. And I'm gonna add most of the dill, leaving some of it for garnishing. I'm gonna taste the soup for salt and seasoning. Gonna do a little more salt. And I like serving the soup in these delicate little vintage plates that I have. I think it goes really well. And here we are. So we've got our beautiful salad, our beautiful soup. Both are a total celebration of citrus season. The soup is so cozy and comforting and the salad is bright and vibrant. I hope you'll give these a try. Let me know what you like to make with citrus and I'll see you next time.